the layers of life. We all have them, and if we're going to be on the cusp of change, we need to be aware of those layers. We need to confront them. We need to embrace them. We need to recognize them. Find out the ones that prevent us from being the best designer we can be when we're thinking of the design of everything. Or what are the layers that enable us to be the best designers and allow us to be the best of who we are? I'm just going to share a few layers with you. And uh, for those of you who know me, I'm used to an amen constant congregation, so it's all right to say amen and anything else you want. All right, this is going to be an interactive experience here. The first layer I got on is the layer of caution tape, the layer of fear. This is a layer that's real. We're afraid. We're sometimes we're afraid of what are they going to say about our design project? What are they going to say? Fear of rejection, fear of failure. Sometimes it's a fear of success that limits us. All right, I'm scared I'm going to die, so take this yellow tape off me. Come on, Eric. Let's go, Katie, quick. All right. Yeah, thank goodness, even though that's a little layer. Come on, quick. you got to move quicker than that. Sometimes, you know, we don't put these layers on ourselves. Other people sometimes contribute to the layers we have. And sometimes it certainly causes us stress. Ah, that's much better right there. All right, thank you. Get that all off. Okay. Now, the next layer I got on here today is the layer of chains, imprisonment. Sometimes the layers of our very souls imprison us. Sometimes they don't allow us to move. Sometimes with our layers, we imprison other people. I gave a talk in the county jail last week, and you think you got problems. We think we got problems. We think we're imprisoned by the client's demands. No, these chains are a lot worse when you're inside jail. Take these chains off me, please. Okay, thank you, yes. Oh, man. This is, I'm feeling a little better here. I think I am going to live through this one. All right, the next layer I got on me here is the layer, I have been what many houses in suburban Chicago get, TP'd. It's a layer of toilet paper. It's a symbol of all the bullshit we have to put up with in life. And if you got bullshit in your life, raise your hand right now, maybe both of them. That's right. Cusp is an opportunity to get rid of that layer, all right? The next layer is the layer of love. We all exist as human beings because of the layer of love. It's symbolized here by bubble wrap. Don't you love this? I love it. Yeah, bubble wrap. Oh, yeah, it's just fun. See little kids with it? We're all kids at times. The layer of love is important, and it's important to make sure we nurture with that. Get this off me. Come on, let's go. Get that layer off. Holy mackerel. I'm telling you, you don't know how bad layers are in life and how they prevent us from getting the most out of life or taking the most advantage until it's off. This is the layer of dress, which it's a layer of identity, who we are as human beings. We're here to design ourselves even further. Who are we as designers? We struggle with that identity sometimes, and it's because we're afraid and maybe not honest with ourselves. The, to address the masculine side of who we are, the feminine side of who we are. We have to be honest if we're going to deal with the layers in life that inhibit us or control us too often. The next layer is the layer of rain gear. Just get this thing off. All right. This layer of rain gear is sort of like it, we go through life as human beings and we're constantly trying to protect ourselves. And we're constantly trying to, to worry. And we should protect ourselves. We should reach out for help. For the most important words, as designers, as, as human beings, as I need your help. In 1998, as Pastor St. Agatha on West Side, my deacon was dying. My pastoral associate, Sister Joe Mary, was dying. Secretary, Denise, three most important people in my life at the time, were all dying within a three-month period. I went to counseling. Somebody said, why are you going to counseling? You do counseling for other people. Because I know if I don't do this, I will die. We have to reach out. We still live in this macho society. I can do it individualistic. I can handle it. No, we can't. We need help. That's why we need to deal with the rain gear layer. Get this off me. This is going to be a challenge. Hurry up. Get that off. All right. All right. Yeah, some layers are easier to put on than others. All right. Thank you very much. Give them a round of applause. Now I can move around here. So this next layer, which has been pretty much decimated, 
is the lab coat, and it represents the layer of stuff that probably causes us a lot of stress in our lives. Can you read it? Is there anything in the back there, left down there, that you can read? What does it say? I don't see anything. You don't see anything. That means it all. There it is. All right. Sometimes we got to go back and get layers and put them on. <laughs> they fall off in life. You know, like in the BS thing, shit happens, okay? But in here I get, oh, this was a nice idea. Hot, cars, Michael Jordan, all the things that society says should be important to us. It's not that important to us. We're not going to be able to put that stuff in the casket when we die. But sometimes we become slaves to material things. In 1972, I lived in a commune in Lake Charles, Louisiana, where lawyers, doctors, and engineers got together and sold everything they had so they could live a more economically fuel-efficient life. And they came out and they did that in open house community. And it hits me again how we allow stuff sometimes to rule us too much. All right. Can you help me here, sir? Thanks a lot. What's your name? Lance. Lance. Thanks. Away. Where are you from, Lance? Tacoma. Tacoma, Washington. Let's give it a hand for Lance here. All right. All right, the next layer I got here, and you believe I got a U.S. Postal Service jacket. Somebody said, that company's going out of business, Mike. What are you doing with them? And I said, well, we'll see. But anyway, you've heard of it, and we've all heard of it, of going postal. And that's a layer that we all have, if we're honest with ourselves, where we become very angry. But if we're going to get the layers off, we got to go out into the crowd. You know, hey, how you doing? What's your name? I'm Ted. Ted, where are you from, Ted? Here in Chicago. Chicago. South side, west side? North side. North side. Oh, okay. I don't know about that. You're not a Cub fan, are you? Always. Always. Okay. Eat your heart out, Carlos Zambrano. Okay. <laughs> anyway, if you don't need Chicago, would you get that? So the postal jazz, the, the anger in our lives, emotionally hot anger, it can stifle us as designers, prevent us from getting to the cusp of who we are because of the hot anger that gets into us. So my recommendation is take that hot anger and turn it into cold anger. The anger where we see an injustice, something wrong in society, and then we use all our designing powers and capacities to go ahead and make a difference, reach out and change that injustice. The next layer of life, right here. All right, the good old referee shirt. Where's Samata? That's a foul on you, Mason. That's a foul on you, Samata. We love to call fouls on other people. Give him a T. Give him a T. Penalize him for offsides. Get him in trouble. Oops, my pants. <laughs> no, trust me, they'll come off, but I don't want to come off yet. So anyway, you know, and that's a problem with layers. When we're trying to be the best of who we are as designers, sometimes we can't control our layers, and we want to be in control. It's just like stress. We want to be in control of stress rather than having stress control us. The more stress-free we are, the more creative we're going to be. The bottom line is we have to quit judging people. We have to quit putting ourselves in their position. One of the programs Good City started, we started nonprofits, is Purpose Over Pain. Purpose Over Pain is a group of parents whose kids were killed by the gun violence in Chicago. You talk about, whoa. Make a th thought about judging others. We can sit and judge them, but that's not what we're supposed to do. Okay, now we got a couple layers left here. And uh, one of those next layers is the layer of adolescence. Yeah, this is 1978, and that's not when I graduated from Quigley South. But this is a Quigley South shirt. That's right, everybody knows that. That's okay to clap. High school's a wonderful time. I was a nerd, believe it or not, in high school. Never said a word to anybody else. In high school, you predicted what I'm doing for today. You'd say, no way. He's going to be a, a librarian somewhere. <laughs> but texting today, being a 16-year-old today, it's a whole new world. Whole new world. And finally, the last layer that I have is, ah, yes, this is my favorite layer <laughs> because uh, when I'm in this layer, I'm most happy with who I am. I'm a pitcher on the CHA softball team. That's 16 inch for those of you who don't play that. And uh, that's right in the lakefront. Yeah, how about these orange socks? Man, that's pretty good. But that's a layer. Where are we most relaxed? Where are we most comfortable? Where are we our best creative self? 
That's what CUSP is all about. Yeah, it's about the lectures, but it's about taking a look at who we are as human beings and dealing with the layers in our lives and relating to one another and relating to other people. Take advantage of the incredible human beings that are here. They've got layers you don't have. Some of their layers can help you with your layers. But this conference is all about getting rid of the layers that stop us from becoming the best designers of humanity that we can be. And let me close with an African folk tale. A story about the spider and the ant. The ant in Africa, in its anthill, had one important job every, every day. And that was to go out and get food for itself and its family. And one particular day, the ant went ahead and went out looking for food for its family. And sure enough, it went out, was looking all over the place, and there it is. There it is. Oh, my God, I think it is. Yes, it's food for me and my family. And the ant said, oh, this is wonderful. A big, juicy breadcrumb. Oh, this is great. And so the ant looked at the breadcrumb, and it had jelly on it. Whoa, are the kids going to be happy? So the ant started pulling and shoving and pushing and using its head and using its side and, and using both sides and finally said, I need some help. And so the ant saw a bee. And the bee was off to the side, and the bee was going biz, 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 biz. And the ant said, oh, bee, 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 please don't be too biz, biz, busy to help me. Ha! Silly ant, said the bee. Can't you see I'm too busy to help thee? Bzz. And off it went. And the ant was very upset and very sad. But off to the side, watching everything, was the sly, clever beetle who sauntered over and said, Hey, ant, you need some help? Oh, yes, said the ant. All right, beetle, here I, all right, ant, here I go, said the beetle. Humph! And took a big chunk right out of the breadcrumb. Oh, no, I can't believe you did that, said the ant. And the beetle walked away and said, hey, ant, you wanted some help? You got a lighter load. <laughs> oh, maybe he's right, said the ant. So the ant started to push and started to shove and pull and was doing pretty good, but it was still pretty rough. And finally, the ant just said, you know what? I quit. I can't do it. I give up. And meanwhile, up in the tree, a wise old spider said, hey, ant, I have your problem solved. Oh, really? Oh, really, said the ant. Oh, yes, said the spider. I'm going to weave a web down to this breadcrumb and feed me and my family. Oh, no, you're not, said the ant. And he started to push and shove and pull and shove. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of everybody messing with me and the bee. And he pushed and shoved and got dizzy and red in the face and sweaty. And when he finished, <laughs> he found himself at the ant hill and got the breadcrumb back there to feed his family. Give the ant a little round of applause. Come on. And meanwhile, up in the tree, the wise old spider said, you see, ant, you can do a lot more than you think you can. And participants of CUSP 2009, so can you. Thank you very much.